Et salut à tous, bienvenue sur votre nouvel épisode de The Trick Play. Aujourd'hui, épisode assez exceptionnel. Comme vous le savez, de temps en temps, on fait des, des petites interviews comme ça euh, de joueurs et ça tombe très bien parce qu'aujourd'hui, eh bien, c'est le cas. On se retrouve actuellement en direct du sud de la France, du Paris et du Texas. On est donc sur un trio international. Et déjà, je voulais remercier Jérémy qui a pu nous euh, obtenir cette interview. Jérémy, alors déjà, tu vas, euh, dans un premier temps, si possible, avant qu'on qu parle de Caleb, tu vas nous, euh, bah, nous présenter ta page qui, toi, tourne autour euh, du rugby. Ouais, tout à fait. Euh, donc, en fait, moi, je suis, euh, je suis entraîneur de rugby. Euh, Aujourd'hui, euh, enfin, sur, je, je finis, en fait, je finis, je travaille pour la Ligue Nouvelle-Aquitaine de rugby en tant que conseiller technique. Et je viens de signer, en fait, un, un contrat avec le, le CA Brief Corrèze, donc club qui évolue en top oh. 14, où je vais, je vais rejoindre, en fait, le staff du, du centre de formation du CA Brief. Donc, euh, voilà, je termine, en fait, mes, mes derniers jours de travail avec la Ligue Nouvelle-Aquitaine de rugby. Et, et à partir du 1er juillet, euh, je serai briviste et, euh, et voilà, je rejoins le, le, le haut niveau et, et les joueurs du centre de formation du, du CAB. Donc voilà, pour ma petite présentation, je vis à, je vis à Périgueux. Euh, et puis euh, voilà, j'ai euh, rapidement, juste pour la, la présentation, j'ai 36 ans, une femme et une, et une petite fille. Voilà. <rire> à qui on passe le bonjour, bien sûr, et félicitations du coup euh, pour, bah, pour ton nouveau Merci. job. <rire> euh, et donc, Jérémy nous, a mis en... <rire> Jérémy nous a mis en lien avec Caleb Howell, Caleb Howell, qui est linebacker du côté de North Texas. Et la petite particularité avec Caleb, c'est que Caleb est un ancien joueur et a joué au rugby en France euh, sous les ordres de Jérémy, justement. Hi Caleb, what's up? Doing good, how are you? Just, uh, just hanging out out here in Texas. Ok, uh, just hanging out here in Paris. <rire> oh yeah. Ok, <rire> okay. parfait. Alors, on va bien entendu poser quelques questions à, à Caleb, mais comme vous avez pu le constater, c'est un épisode assez spécial qui fait un petit crossover entre le football américain et le rugby, deux sports souvent euh, euh, reliés, pas forcément juste au titre en, en France, mais c'est vrai qu'on va étudier un petit peu les similitudes et euh, tout ce qui s'y raccroche, notamment en suivant le parcours de Caleb. Alors, Kelly, first, like, how did you start? When did you start playing football? So uh, I've been playing football. Um, my my father is a football coach, and so uh, really, you know, ever since I can re remember, um, since I was very young, uh, probably uh, five years old, maybe. Um, you know, in, in in America, football is like the, the number one sport. Uh, and so most kids start when they're they're pretty young. And so I, I've been playing football for a really long time. Um, and so I'm, I'm really fortunate to be able to still be playing, you know, um, 24 years old. So. Oh, all right. Perfect. Uh, so what were your position when you, when you were in high school? In uh, high school, I was a, a linebacker and a running back. Um, and I think that's really what, what uh, helped me out uh, playing rugby was uh, um, I was able to carry the ball and uh, I was on the defensive side of football, um, being able to tackle. Uh, and so I had had both uh, experience experiences in high school um, and then moving on to college. I've, I've actually done both in college, too, um, at, at the University of North Texas. Um, I'm mostly on defense at North Texas, but I've done a little bit uh, of offense too. Okay, all right, perfect. So we, okay, so you know, like all the Friday night likes things and stories, yeah. beautiful stories about Texas. Like, how is it like, is it really a myth or a reality? Like football in, in Texas is really like, it's something, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like it, high school it's, football. It's, yeah? it's not a myth, it, it's, it's the real deal and It's funny because, you know, when you drive out in Texas, there's uh, you have the big cities like Dallas and Houston. Um, you may have heard of those. Um, but kind of outside those cities, there's really, really small towns of, you know, a couple thousand people. Uh, and for those towns, every Friday night, the whole entire town shuts down and everyone's gone to the game. Uh, businesses have signs up that say, you know, we're closed. We, we've gone to the game. Uh, and really in, in those, that Friday night lights feel 
uh, is more for the really small towns. Um, in, in the city, you get that Friday night uh, lights feel uh, a little bit, but um, really in the smaller towns is where um, the whole entire town is all in and, and going to the game. Because like in Dallas, I mean, there's hundreds of high schools in the Dallas area just because there's so many people. Um, and so, you know, some people will be at this high school, some people will be at that high school. And so, you know, the whole Dallas, the whole entire city of Dallas isn't shut down on Friday night, but, uh, in those small towns, uh, it really does. It's really cool. I got to play against some of those teams. Um, when I was in high school, the, the small town teams and it, it's crazy. I mean, it's, there's people standing, um, there's no room in the stands and it's, uh, it's a pretty cool deal. All right, like you really make French people dream, <laughs> I guess. So. <laughs> uh, so in high school, you did some track, no? Yeah, yeah, I did, did? Uh, some. Yeah, I ran a hurdles uh, in, oh, okay. in high school. Did it help you like to play rugby or football? Yeah, I think running track, um, it help, helps you with your speed. And I think in really any sport, these days speed and quickness is is you know speed and quickness trumps size any day because i mean you can be you know big but if you can't run uh, especially in rugby or football you know you're, you're kind of useless and so um running track uh helps the flexibility quickness uh, mobility i mean you know everything you need to you know play a physical sport uh, and so I, i i do credit my speed uh to uh track and field uh when i was in high school Okay, uh, so we're gonna speak about the recruit, your recruiting process because so we forgot you had some offers from Air Force, Army, and Missouri State. Officially, it's what we yeah. We've, uh, and uh, so why? What happened after high school? Why you didn't pick one of this uh, college? So there's there's a certain aspect of the uh, so like Air Force and Army, you know they they don't give you the opportunity to continue football uh, into the professional level because yeah. uh, you're, you're required to uh, do military service after um, you get done with football there. I had a couple other division one offers. Uh, there's a school um, in Texas called uh, University of Texas, El Paso. Um, they're a division one team, um, a couple other small schools, but um, in the end, um, I kind of waited too long in my recruiting for those schools. Um, and, you know, so what happens is, you know, they'll, they'll offer a bunch of guys and basically the first guys to commit and sign are the guys they're going to take. And so I waited too long. Um, and then I ended up only having a small school, um, that my older brother actually played at. Uh, and so I, I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and try it out there. Um, and didn't end up, didn't really like it that much. And, uh, I was, I was wanting to, to do something different and that's when, You know, I you know got the opportunity to come over to France and and play rugby. So um, it, it was it's a weird a weird deal, but um, you know I mean it worked out. I'm glad I I'm glad it all happened. Okay, so we're gonna start speaking about rugby, Augusta. Uh, you will get take this one. At the same time, je, uh, Jérémy, si tu veux répondre aussi de temps en temps pour compléter, c'est avec plaisir, hein, bien entendu. So uh, let's continue what? with uh, the rugby side. Uh, why did you want to, to go uh, to, to play rugby? And uh, what did you want to go, especially in France, in Périgueux? And the latest and the, I would say the wider question, um, how did you arrive, uh, arrive in uh, Périgueux? Um, you know, I, th I think the, the biggest thing is I, I wanted to do something different. And um, I think football and rugby are, are, are as close to, to sports as you can get. I mean, you know, rugby, there's a, there's a lot more running, a lot more endurance. But um, the physical aspect, the hitting, the tackling, um, I was really drawn uh, to that. And, and, and being in France, you know, I, I was told, you know, Fran rugby in France is, is the best rugby in the world. And that's where the, the, the guys make the most money playing. Uh, there's the top 14 teams um, or the top 14 league. And it, it's funny because I didn't, I didn't know much about it. I, I knew, I knew about rugby. I knew, I mean, I watched, you know, the all blacks uh, whenever I was in high school and, and, and uh, New Zealand and said Australia and stuff like that. But um, I didn't know a whole lot about uh, how 
uh, the rugby uh, leagues worked in France. And so, um, but I'd always heard it was the best. And so I wanted to go play with the best uh, for sure. So I, you were talking about uh, tackling. Um, did you rugby help you to uh, tackle better or vice versa? Oh yeah. Oh, it was, it was funny. So um, about two months ago when we were practicing, Um, we, we got a new coaching staff, and so they had never seen me play before. And we were doing some tackling drills, and, and we had a live scrimmage. And I was, like, the only one who didn't miss a tackle. And they were like, you know, why, why do you – and I was – they noticed I tackled a little bit different than everyone else. Um, and they were like, why are you tackling like that? I was like, because that's a rugby tackle. That's the safest way to tackle. It's the most effective, most efficient. And, you know, you don't you – know, a lot of guys in, in football – You know, we'll try to tackle with their head straight down and then, you know, it'll, it'll, they'll hit the top of their head, hurt their necks. Um, but the, the rugby tackle, and I know the, uh, the Seattle Seahawks um, used to teach rugby tackling a, a lot. And yes. that was the, the best defense in, in, the, in the country whenever they started. I didn't know. Um, yeah, yeah. And whenever they started teaching that, um, there's some videos on YouTube about it and it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think rugby tackling is is the most easy way to tackle, and and people who play football try to overcomplicate it and try to make it way too complicated, and it's not that hard. It's just you got to learn. But the rugby way is the easiest way. Okay. Et uh, du coup, maintenant une question pour Jérémy. Ouais. Uh, Est-ce que par exemple, quand Kyle est arrivé en France, tu voyais que sa technique de plaquage n'était pas, enfin. Je ne vais pas dire aussi bonne, mais est-ce que tu voyais qu'elle était différente que celle que tu voulais en tant qu'entraîneur de rugby Oui, ouais, en, term en termes de sécurité, hein, Caleb il a dit, c'est surtout en termes de sécurité où, où ils ont tendance, enfin on le voit dans les matchs, ils ont tendance à, à s'engager fort. Euh, ce qu'ils essayent de faire souvent, c'est impacter sur le ballon pour, faire, euh, voilà, pour créer le fumble et, et espérer euh, créer un, un turnover pour, pour récupérer le ballon. Et ils impactent... Euh, alors souvent, souvent au casque, ils engagent l'épaule, mais sans vraiment avoir une technique particulière de serrage de bras, euh, d'engager ce que nous on appelle euh, l'axe fort en fait, épaule, euh, épaule, euh, bassin et jambes sur la même épaule pour vraiment être, euh, être avoir un bon placement et surtout avoir, euh, être capable de plaquer en sécurité avec la tête du bon côté. Et en fait, quand Kaïdev est arrivé, c'était euh, tout de suite, c'est pas qu'il avait une mauvaise technique de plaquage, c'est qu'il voulait s'engager vite et fort. Et euh, c'est ce qui se passe au foutuesse, en fait. C'est de l'homme à homme. Alors qu'au rugby, fin, voilà, si, euh, fin, si vous suivez le rugby, vous savez comment ça se passe. Il faut être un petit peu plus intelligent. Et on ne peut pas juste s'engager sur l'homme fort si on ne réfléchit pas, parce qu'on défend à plusieurs. Et quelquefois, il voilà, y a besoin de réfléchir avant d'engager le placage. Et quand on est sur l'homme à homme, après, il y, y a un aspect sécuritaire avant, avant tout. Et, et ouais, il a fallu travailler là-dessus. Parce qu'au départ, euh, il sortait de la ligne seul, il voulait défendre seul. Et voilà, il a fallu lui faire comprendre que c'était collectif. Et euh, la force qu'il avait, c'était euh, l'engagement. Quelquefois au rugby, et on le voit sur les jeunes à l'école de rugby par exemple, la problématique qu'il y a, c'est l'aspect euh, euh, affectif où j'ai un peu peur de plaquer. Euh, et du coup, même quelquefois sur des, euh, sur des, des joueurs de même de 17-18 ans, euh, ça peut encore arriver. Quand il y a un mec qui arrive très vite, on... Voilà, on ferme les yeux, on se baisse, on se dit, voilà, on va le prendre, on va le faire tomber. Euh, lui, il n'avait pas cette appréhension. Lui, il venait pour faire mal, pour impacter fort et vraiment pour intervenir sur le ballon. Sauf que c'était intéressant, mais quelquefois, il cassait la ligne et, et, et il sortait complètement. Mais par contre, Kaleb a vraiment appris, appris très, très, très vite. Et il a su se mettre au, au niveau des autres très, très rapidement. Enfin, j'ai rarement vu un joueur, euh, comment dire, euh, progresser aussi vite et comprendre aussi vite. Et c'est là la différence, je pense, entre les, les sportifs américains et les sportifs, euh, et les sportifs français. Une il question d'envie, quoi. Et je pense, ouais, exactement. Puis peut-être par rapport à tous les sports qu'il a pu faire, il y avait vraiment cette capacité à, il sait pourquoi il est là, il va apprendre très vite. Et, euh, et, et j'ai trouvé que sa marge de progression était, euh, était très, très importante. Donc, ouais, pour, pour revenir à la question, oui, il y avait du boulot sur lui individuellement, pas, pas dans l'engagement, mais vraiment sur la technique. Parce que euh, je me rappelle d'un match, je ne sais pas s'il se souvient, mais euh, il s'est éteint sur un placage parce qu'il a engagé la tête la première et il a pris le genou et, et ça l'a secoué un peu sur le cou. Et voilà, là, il n'y a pas de casque pour se protéger. Et, et du coup, voilà, on avait bossé déjà précédemment, mais euh, voilà, ça ne se fait pas en un clin d'œil. Il, euh, voilà, il faut travailler, travailler. Euh, 
pour, pour ça, mais, mais il y avait l'engagement, la volonté d'apprendre et il a appris très vite et, et il, a su, euh, ouais, il a su régler ça assez vite. Et, et je pense qu'aujourd'hui, ça, ça lui sert pour, pour le foot et, euh, et ça lui sert pour, pour sa, sa carrière aujourd'hui en, en universitaire. Caleb, do you uh, Caleb, understand what... little things when we speak in French? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I can pick up some words here and there, yeah. but, you know, it, it, it's... <laughs> It's been a long time, so it, it, it'd take me a little bit to kind of get back, uh, you know, learning more. But when, when I was there, I started to learn a little bit, didn't I, Jeremy? I, I, was, I was learning and getting a little bit better at it. I wasn't great, but I started, uh, I started, I started learning some words. Uh, I feel you, man. Like, my, my girlfriend's American, and she moved in France to live with me, and She's like, she started to learn too, so now she speaks, she understands, but whoa, yeah. when you come from English to, and you have to, to learn French, oh my God, like, uh -huh. I feel you, man. <laughs> okay. But uh, is... One last question. Uh, what uh, position were you playing? I guess, uh, like, you, you, were, um, you, were line uh, were, you were line banker and running back, uh, you played uh, wi winger? No. Yeah, I was uh, I was the 15 and the 14. Um, okay. I think yeah. I may have played uh, 13 once one game maybe, but uh, mostly I was the uh, the wing and the uh, the 15. Okay. You you can use your your feet. <laughs> you 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 can kick. Yeah. Oh no no. I, I mean I can I can punt, uh, but I can't uh, kick from the ground. That, that's we had to get uh, really on to do that. It would it would be cool to put uh, to to put punter uh, on the rugby field. Oh yeah, it would be interesting. Yeah, I I can I can punt it pretty good, but yeah, from the ground, uh, it's, it's it's a lot different. So, uh, yeah, like do, do you think like rugby could inspire football and football could inspire rugby? Oh oh absolutely. I think it's funny because um, I had a, a teammate last year um, who was talking to me a lot about. Uh, rugby and and he's from hawaii uh so he's a polynesian guy um and he actually quit uh football uh and joined our uh university rugby uh team and and he's been killing it and he's like dude it, there, there's so many similarities and I, i'm not gonna lie I, i think rugby was way more fun than football the the physical aspect um the the constant running because in football You have a play that lasts, you know, four or five seconds, and then it's over, and then you go back to the huddle, and then you do another play. In rugby, I mean, you just keep on going, and those guys never stop. There's, I'll never forget, I, someone got injured, and I look over, and the game's still going. I'm like, what are we doing? Someone's hurt, and they're still <laughs> running around the field. And, uh, but no, it is. There's so many similarities. Um, And, and different things and different skills you have to do because you got to be quick in both sports. You got to be fast. You have to be strong. You have to be uh, physical. You have to you have to love contact and hitting people, um, regardless yeah. of, of of wearing pads or a helmet or not. Um, it, it takes a little bit different person. Like I mean, it's not a, a normal human instinct to want to hit another human, you know, and so. Um, football players and rugby players are, are alike in that way. And, and I already know a bunch of my friends um, want to get into rugby after they get done playing football just because of what I've told them uh, and the experiences that I had. Because um, there's so many there's so many similarities. But, I mean, there's also differences because I remember we would um, run miles and for, for our workouts. And in football, we run – you know, a hundred meters and, you know, that's, that's our workouts. And as, as there's different mm. conditioning, um, different workouts, but, um, you know, you have to, you have to love contact and love to tackle, uh, and just love to grind and, 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 you know, work hard. And, um, but no, it's, I, I love, I, I, I still watch rugby. I still keep up. I still keep up with Patty. I still follow, uh, uh, cap on Instagram and, Uh, like their post. Which team uh, do you support? Do which, what? Which uh, which team do you support? You mean just like oh, I, I just watch all of it. I, I, I like the I, I like the international games. Uh, so I watch France international team. 
Um, okay. The All Blacks, obviously, but that's kind yeah, of they're, they're kind of cliche, but um, but yeah, it's 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 fun to keep up with, and and um, I'm trying to teach my friends different rules, and that that, that was one thing that I kind of struggled with was just the rules of the game, um, <laughs> just learning learning the rules. Um, but uh, I, I've gotten better, um, and so who knows? I, I may I may have to come back and play again. <laughs> Me too. Even after uh, after 15 years of uh, of rugby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who knows? But uh, I I, w- I would love to make it to the NFL, but who knows? It's it's really it's really tough to do that. Um, there's a lot of a lot of good dudes here, so yeah. I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, like you know, some guys have been to the NFL, but we'll speak about it later. Uh, and we wanted to know, like, how was life in the southwest of France? Like, do, do, did you like the food? Because it's very specific. Yeah, it's there was a lot of bread, dude. There was bread every meal. Do you like bread? Um, yeah, I like <laughs> French bread. I mean, a lot, a lot of baguettes. Um, what is the uh, fromage blanc? The, fromage blanc. Dude, they that stuff was good. Was like, <laughs> I, I miss that stuff. That. That was so good. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the, the meals that we would have uh, after our uh, fundamentals practice was, was always really good. Um, they would cook up for us in the little club clubhouse, and um, that was always the best. And, and you know, American food is, is really fattening. That's why we got a lot of fat people here. Um, and it, so it's really good. But um, it was I, – I loved everything about France. I mean, the, the landscape and – um, the cast, there's castles everywhere. You don't have castles in America. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, it was, it, it was really cool uh, to live there for sure. We'll come back one day. Oh, Just for sure. Later. For right. sure. I know, I know, I know Jeremy misses me, so I got to come back and see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you are welcome in my house. So no problem awesome. <laughs> when you want. <laughs> Perfect. Ouais, pour, pour l'histoire en fait, quand il est quand il est euh, quand il est venu en France, du coup, il était en fait, on avait deux on avait deux joueurs américains. Do you remember Maurice? You remember oh, yeah. the other oh, American man. guys, big Dude, guys. He, wow, he hey. was, un gars yeah. il est monstrueux. Ah ouais, un vraiment un c'est, c'est un lineman offensif pareil qui était euh, lui il était du côté de la, de la Géorgie, il était pas loin d'Atlanta, je crois si je okay. me trompe pas. Et pareil, il avait fait comme Kaidev. En fait, il avait voulu tenter l'aventure avec nous. C'était un monstre, mais vraiment un monstre. Quand il rentrait sur le terrain, les, per... <rire> les mecs se disaient, mais il sort d'où ce mec et, euh, et vraiment, gros, gros, gros fitness, des gros appuis euh, par rapport à son poids, parce que je crois qu'il, faisait un 4... je crois qu'il devait faire un 98, il devait faire 130 kilos. Et, euh, et il bougeait vraiment, il bougeait très bien, comme un lineman. Quoi. Et, ouais. et donc, quand ils sont arrivés, bon, c'était, ils sont arrivés en octobre. Et évidemment, novembre, Thanksgiving. Donc, évidemment, ils sont venus à la maison manger. <rire> J'avais ramené un ami qui est, qui est voilà comme moi qui est fan de de foot US et donc on avait fait la, la fête tous ensemble. Uh, I talk about the Thanksgiving when you come in my house with oh, Maurice yeah. and we hit together and watch some NFL football and it was you fun. Know, so he's a, you had you had some American flag napkins and plates and yeah yeah <laughs> that was that was awesome. Guy, <laughs> c'est notre question. Um, no, I think it's, uh, it's good. Tu veux que je passe uh, au chapitre suivant? Okay, so no now, now we're gonna focus on North Texas. Okay. So, like, first congratulations because you ended up in North Texas and whoa, man, like D1, like congratulations. Yeah, appreciate so, it. So, <laughs> so how did you end up in North Texas? Like so. So they, they recruited me in high school, um, and I, I knew their coaches pretty well. Uh, and so when I got back, um, they, they figured out that I was back, and, and I went up there and had a conversation, and, and um, they were like, look, you know, we're, we're looking for some linebackers, um, and so we'd love for you to come on. And it was really just kind of random. I, I didn't know uh, if I wanted to play uh, football anymore, but um, they, they asked me to, and so I was – I was like, I mean, might as well. I'm living the dream, you know, playing Division One football. And, you know, it's not, you know, the biggest school. It's not, you know, Alabama or, 
you know, Clemson or anything, but it's, it's an, it's, it's a good school. And, uh, we play some good fall. We get, get a lot of fans there every game and, uh, um, it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. I'm really, really fortunate to uh, be there. And you play in the heart of your state, so it's still like yeah, full exactly. of pride, you know. Uh huh. And uh, so there you studied as a tight end, isn't it? You yeah, play tight end, Leo? Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, it, I was kind of a um, tight end slash H back um, guy, kind of a, a wing guy. Um, and then it was funny because. Um, I started out as a linebacker, then they moved me to H-back, and then last year, um, I started off the season as an H-back, and then after the first game of the season, um, probably like four or five of our linebackers got COVID, and so they they were out for two weeks, and they, they came to me, they're like, hey, look, we know you used to play linebacker here, um, do you want to, you know, we, we need you to play there again, I was like, yeah, sure, might as well, and And then we played against a, a really good team the next week. And, uh, and so I, I started like the next like two or three games. Um, and I hadn't played linebacker in like two years. And so I was having to learn, uh, relearn the defense, relearn um, a lot of stuff. But it was fun. I had a lot of fun. And uh, I was out there making tackles, making plays. And it was, it was, it just, it all came back to me. It's like riding a bike. Bon alors, on est désolé si vous voyez euh, une image, vous entendez un son bizarre, on a dû faire un petit cut pour raison technique, mais on est de retour, donc on parlait euh, bah, euh, de Caleb qui a évolué, donc à partir du moment où il est arrivé à North Texas, comment ça s'est passé et euh, pourquoi il était Thailand et comment il est revenu vers la position de linebacker. Alors, on va parler de la saison 2020, the season 2020 for you at North Texas, so it was like kind of a... For crazy season, if I can say that, yeah. unfortunately. So, like individually, what do you think about your season? Like how you played, your stats, what you bring on the field, you brought on the field. Sorry. Yeah. No. I, I think I think I did. Uh, you know, you can always do better. Um, and I, I thought for the circumstances that we were in, because I only played in in seven games. Uh, because I was, I was, well, I only played in six games actually, because I was out with COVID for two. And then, um, the first game of the season, I was, wasn't even a linebacker. Um, and so I think for, for only playing six games, I was, I was proud of myself, but, um, there's always room for improvement, um, and, and learning the defense and, and different things like that. But, um, overall I was, I was I was pleased, um, especially in such a crazy year uh, that we had. But um, you know, you can always you can always get better. Well, what did your coach tell you? They 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 were actually really really excited and proud that that I changed back to linebacker. Um, they uh, and well, the co those coaches got fired, but uh, they were yeah. Um, They were they were happy and you know they're good coaches and it just you know didn't work out because our defense wasn't wasn't very good uh, last year and and our offense was always really good but our defense struggled a lot uh, and so um, it, it's just kind of a weird thing because you know I, I'm I'm happy personally with how I did but I wasn't super happy about you know how our defense as a, a whole uh, defense did um, but you know. Sometimes you'll have bad years, kind of like the Chargers do every year, Jeremy. Um, but uh, <laughs> oh, but, uh, that was nice. They're doing, they're doing great. With Justin Herbert, that would be better. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was really proud and, and uh, of, of how I did. Okay. And uh, what was like last year? What was the toughest team you you play against? Um, the toughest team we played against, uh, well, we were going to play a team called Texas A&M, um, and they're one of the best teams in the country, but they ended up canceling because of COVID. And so they would have been the best team we played. Um, but yeah, uh, you, you, yeah. you would have, you would have tackled Kellen Mon. So good luck. Oh yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh yeah. 
And uh, but I think the best team we probably played was uh, probably the first game that I started with against us, SMU. Um, they had a couple draft picks. Um, yeah, Shane played. Bucilli. Also, is that, that was a French guy actually, like playing for SMU too. Oh, really? Yeah, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they're 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 the real deal. And so uh, we play them again this year, and um, they're gonna be tough, but we'll see what happens. Okay, and so how did you did you uh, got ready for the season like with the COVID? Like, w what changed from an, a basic season? You want, you know what I mean? Like for you in your preparation before the season? Oh yeah, it was well, it was weird because um, usually we go all summer uh, and do summer workouts, but we we weren't allowed to do that up until like probably about three weeks before the season started, and so um, we were behind. Um, but, but I mean, everyone was behind. And so, you know, we felt like we could have prepared more, but at the same time, all the other teams prepared just as much as we did. Uh, and so we didn't get to work out very much. didn't get to condition very much. Didn't get to practice very much before our first game. Um, but it was the same with everyone. Yeah. And so, uh, it was a lot different, um, and having to, Uh, you know, wear a, a face covering, you know, during the games and on the sidelines, that was tough. Um, there was some games where uh, we couldn't have anyone in the stadium. Um, and that's, it's weird because it's almost just like a practice, um, you know, just a little scrimmage, but it's, you know, counts as a real game. Um, but it was, there was a lot of different things, but they're telling us this year that it's going to be uh, a lot more normal. Um, as people are getting vaccines and, and, you know, it's starting to settle down a little bit. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited for this year because we, we started summer workouts last week and um, we're getting to actually prepare the right way. All right. So about last year, so there's something like we have to ask you this question. So I'm going to speak in French first and then in English for you. Okay. Hello. Pour bien entendu, les auditeurs qui nous écoutent ou les viewers qui nous regardent, euh, comme vous le savez, Caleb était dans la même équipe qu'un certain Jalen Darden, qui était un des meilleurs receveurs de la dernière draft, enfin, de la, de la QV en tout cas, et euh, qui a été sélectionné au quatrième tour par les champions en titre, les Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, you were teammate with Jalen Darden. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We're not going to ask you to, to tell us a, a beautiful story, like we were teammates, super friends or anything. No, but just... Like, was it really, like, was it really, uh, um, oh, uh, désolé, I, I, forgot my, I forget my English, like, was it really that good during the trainings, even during the trainings? Oh, dude, I'll tell you what, the first time I saw Jalen Darden four years ago, he was this little, this little skinny guy who was really loud in the locker room, and I, I, oh. I didn't like I didn't like him very much, but that was, that was like four years ago. Now, the, the more he grew and the more he worked, the, I, he is the hardest working dude I've ever met. And he put on muscle, he, he gained speed and he is, he is that good. The, you know, all the highlights you see of him, um, all the game. I mean, there was a game I, he, he caught like four, four touchdown passes uh, on the same exact route, uh, four different times. And so, He is good, and um, he's he was obviously the best player on our team, um, and getting to work with him was uh, was real special. I remember after our last game, um, I, I hugged him and I said, "I can't wait to watch you uh, in the league uh, and score touchdowns in, in the NFL." And he said, "I really appreciate that," and you know now he's playing with Tom Brady, uh, and, and yeah. he's 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 really excited. I, I talked to him. Uh, Uh, once after he got uh, drafted and uh, he's he's living the life he's living the, the good life um, you know got a got a big contract living in Tampa um, but he's he is probably he's the best route runner I've ever seen in person I mean if you watch him run routes um, break off routes change a direction he is he is quick And it, it is it is so impressive to see, and y'all will see it next year when he plays. And his quickness is is something to to marvel at. Okay, 
And so, but yeah, he's... Uh, we believe he, you. He, we watched him on TV, so we believe you. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's real good. And, and, and he, he used to be, you know, you know, small. And like I said, he was, I didn't really like him that much, but, but he grew up and, and, and we both, we were pretty cool with each other. So, yeah. um, you know, we weren't like best friends or anything, but he, he's a good dude. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so like, it's going to be more personal questions. And if you want to, to, uh, to don't answer anything, like, don't worry about it. Just no, say yeah, it. that's fine. No problem. But like, so first, what was the best team you, you played against? Uh, at North Texas? Yeah. Uh, probably SMU uh, was the best team yeah. uh, this past year. Um, I, next year we play uh, Missouri and they're an SEC team. Uh, so they'll be pretty good next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, who's the best player like you played against so i have to i have to be honest with you in this podcast we already got players who told us like the best player i played against was trevor lawrence or devonta smith and this thing so no yeah no I don't, <laughs> don't, don't put pressure on yourself on your answer don't worry no no yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. I, I would say the the best running back I, I, I the best player was i mean uh shane bouchelle was was really good um um for smu he's a good quarterback but i think probably the best the best running back i played against um was probably uh he, he was a guy from charlotte um who absolutely burned me i mean okay. he ran a route right down the middle of the field and i was supposed to cover him and he absolutely toasted me um he was really good and there was a uh, a guy that um I didn't play against because I was on defense, but this was probably three years ago. Um, his name was Marcus Davenport, and he plays for the Saints now. Oh, uh, he, man. He's a defensive end. Yeah, he I, played. He, I, I, yeah. No, I, I'm sorry. Sorry to have cut you, but like, I have to be honest with you. I'm a big Saints fan for like almost 12 years. I'm oh, like, really? I've been to the Superdome. I am like the, wow. the community manager of Saints Friends on Twitter. And like, really? man, you 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 saw Marcus Davenport in person at UTSA. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. UTSA. He was. Oh man. He, like, I, I remember looking at him. I was like, that dude is gonna be a first round draft pick, even though he he doesn't play for a big school. And he, dude, he was good. And he got after us real good. Um, but yeah, he was. He, that's funny. You're a Saints fan. But yeah, he's he was probably the best player overall i've ever played against okay great to hear that and, like uh, i am uh, i'm looking your schedule your next uh, schedule and uh, you are gonna play uh, utep and uh, utsa uh, el paso and uh, san antonio so you yeah. will play uh, sincere uh, mccormick the running back oh. Oh, one yeah. of the He's... best of uh, country oh yeah he was he was really good yeah I guess I guess him he, he was actually probably the best running back we played against. Man, they 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 killed us last year. I mean it was embarrassing. Like like we didn't have an answer for anything they'd do. They would just run they didn't even throw it. They probably only threw it like fifteen times that game. They ran it, you know, forty, fifty times. But uh yeah, Sincere McCormick's really good. And I have uh they have another running back, um, too, who's pretty good. His name is Kadrick Cobbs. Um He's from my hometown, and so um, they're gonna be pretty good. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. I think I think we'll have a pretty good team this year. And you have a lot of work on your position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, so, so I, I've told you, like I've told you, I'm a Saints fan. Do you have a team in the NFL? Don't worry, no scoots are listening to us, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Uh, you know, I, even though I'm from Texas, I'm not really a big Cowboys fan. Um, I've always liked the Packers. Um, I was a big Packers fan when when Brett Favre was there a long time ago. Um, but, I mean, I, I usually I, – I, I like college football, watching college football more uh, yeah. than watching the NFL. Um but I, every time I see the Chargers on, now I watch them because I know I know Jeremy's watching them, and, you know, <laughs> yes. yelling yelling at his TV. And uh, but a lot of a 
a lot of former guys that I played with, I'll, I'll keep up with those teams. Like, I think on the on the Buccaneers, we have like four four former players that I played with on the Buccaneers. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I keep I'll keep up with the Buccaneers quite a bit this year, especially with uh, Jalen playing there. But um, you know, I, I like the Packers. If the Packers do good, I'm happy. But I'm not I'm not like a diehard fan. Okay, all right. And uh, in uh, in college football, like except okay, except from your conference or anything, but like a team from the Power Five you used to like when you were younger or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big uh, Auburn fan. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, I I used to live there. Uh, my dad coached okay. there for a little bit, um, and so I I like Auburn a lot. My younger brother plays baseball at Auburn actually. Um, And so, uh, yeah, he's 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 been playing there for two years. He's a he's a, a junior there, so I'm a big Auburn fan. Okay, cool. I hope for you, Bonix will do a great job this year because we're waiting for it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Augusta, you, you had a question? Uh, yes, uh, nothing to say with this, but uh, I was uh, scrolling uh, of uh, on my uh, Instagram uh, feed, and I have seen your last video of um, motivating uh, your, uh, oh, yeah. your, your your lads. And uh, uh, do you uh, consider yourself as a, a leader of your team? Yeah, I, I would consider myself a leader. We, uh, um, before the games, I, I usually give the, uh, the little speech, um, you know, like kind of on the field. And then uh, um, yeah, I have seen whenever, whenever we, whenever we, we do our workouts, uh, I'll, I'll usually talk to the guys uh, and, And you know, help them if they're if they're hurting or if they're tired. Um, but it's just because I'm I'm older. I think uh, you know I'm 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 24, and you know I have got you know guys who are 19 and 20 on my team, and so they always look up to the older guys. And um, so I think I think I'm just just from an age standpoint, I would say I'm a leader, and and um, the guys look up to me, so I'll I'll help them out if they need it. The older brother, yeah, okay. It, it's it's still crazy to think like next year during the night in France we will be watching you like we interviewed you and we'll be watching you on the field yeah. like <laughs> on TV and like it's it's crazy to think about it yeah so, no, it's, it's, it's gonna be fun <laughs> we will watch for sure so you you, you know except Jeremy you will have other other guys in France watching you. And, uh, awesome. and and I think some of our viewers or our listeners. So we're gonna finish uh, on this. Some few questions for the 2021 year. Uh, coming, so this year, the next season. Uh, yeah. So how how do you feel like? How do you feel the next season coming? So you have a new staff. Uh, you told us the team gets better. What 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 do you feel about the 2021 season? I think I think we're going to be a lot better because our, our defense was, was really bad. And, and, you know, when you're a really bad defense, the only way to go is, is to get better. You can't get any, I, we couldn't get any worse than we did last year. Uh, and so um, we have a, a coach, our, our, our new defensive coordinator is uh, his name is Phil Bennett. And he's been, he's been coaching for 40 years. Uh, he's going to be in the college football hall of fame one day. Um, and he's he's a, a he's a real a real good coach. He's the real deal. Um, and so I think just him uh, being in charge of our defense, uh, we're going to be better. We've got a lot of transfers coming in from other schools. Uh, we have a, a defensive lineman from uh, the University of Arkansas uh, who's coming in, and um, he's going to be pretty good. And a lot of starters coming back. Um, and so. I think I think we're going to be a lot better than we were last year. We only won four games last year, but um, you know we, we really want to win a, a championship in a bowl game this year, um, and so I, I I really do think we can do that. Okay, and the last question is: Do you think you can uh, end up in the NFL? Like you can make it? Yeah, I mean, I think the only, the the biggest thing going for me is my speed. Uh, and so um, I've been training with our our strength coaches um, just on my speed and and because whenever you go to a combine and, and you try out, 
um, you've got to have something that sticks out to the coaches. You can't just be average. Uh, and so I think my speed uh, and my strength is what's really going to um, be able to, to separate myself from other guys. And I have a uh, one of my buddies um, who, who um, he went to my high school. He's a scout for the Texans. Um, and he, he's been talking to me a little bit, just, just as like friends, you know, he's been telling me different things I can work on and, um, different things I can do to, um, help me get to the next level, but who knows? Uh, it's, it's, it's really tough, but I, I'm really, you know, hopeful that I can, but, um, you know, we'll see. I've just got to train hard and, and, and play good this year. We wish it for you, at least. But you have to promise me, if you sing in any way with the Saints, you have to send me a jersey. Oh, man, <laughs> for sure. I'll, get okay. you, I'll even get you some tickets, too. Oh, I would <laughs> love it. I would love it. My girlfriend would be like, oh, no, not a football game again. I will. The Saints, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, en tout cas, merci beaucoup, Caleb. Merci beaucoup, Jérémy. Uh, bah, merci de nous avoir mis en lien. Merci encore une fois d'avoir bah, permis ça. Merci de nous écouter aussi parce que c'est pareil. Tu, de, de base, tu nous as connus en tant que entre guillemets auditeur, mais enfin euh, c'est. Ouais, tout à fait. Voilà. Ouais, c'est ça. Comme vous voyez, enfin euh, tout, tout le monde est, est concerné par le podcast et ça c'est super cool. Ça fait vraiment plaisir. Donc merci ouais, une fois, Jérémy. Avec et, euh, merci à vous. Et Caleb, thank you for everything, man. Uh, yeah, merci, merci. <laughs> See you on the film next year, and uh, we keep in touch. For sure, thank you. Okay, All right, Jeremy, I'll see you, Jeremy. Yes, yes, you. I see you. Yeah, me too. Good to see you. Yeah. All right, merci. see you later. Allez, à la prochaine, Bye. tout le monde. Ciao.